We've got some water and uh, washing up liquid in there and I'm going to bubble that through and make some big bubbles, put it on my hand and set fire to it. And Sibo is going to very kindly do that. So let's mm. hope nothing goes wrong. I've been waiting this moment for a very long time. <laughs> Putting you under pressure, Sibo. Did that get my hair? <laughs> yeah, that was close, that was close. <laughs> Hi, 大家好，我是戴书香，我来自英国，欢迎回到我的频道。你可能已经知道这个频道主要的主题是有关英国文化。And we can't talk about British culture without talking about British boarding schools. So I've come to one of the ten oldest independent schools in the UK. It's called Loughborough Grammar School, and it was founded in 1495. It has both day and boarding students. So today I'm going to talk to loads of different people about what it's really like to be in a British boarding school. Let's do it. Hi, hi, Terence. He's from the Britone Advisory Centre, and he invited me here today. I'm going to say like, "Gam ya dai o le le do." Well, it's my pleasure. 如果你大家想知道更加多英國寄宿學校嘅生活嘅資訊咧，可以隨時聯絡我哋。你哋喺邊個國家嚟都得噶。Loughborough Grammar has a long heritage. It's even older than the famous schools of Radley, Harrow, and Winchester, and it's one of just a tiny number of boarding schools left that are still for boys only. Just like in Harry Potter, there are four houses at this school: Abney, Davis, Pulteney, and Yates, all named. After alumni, every year there are sports, quizzes, chess, bridge, and music competitions between the houses, and the winning house wins a cup or trophy. The question that everyone's dying to know is how much similarity is there between Harry Potter and your school in terms of the houses? Well, we can first agree that there's no magic in it. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the houses, I would say there is definitely some competition. At the end of the year, we have a really big sports event, so I would say it's, it's really big thing. There's like tons of competition, so you surely can participate at something. If sports isn't your thing, then there's A lot of arts, chess games, chess games. sports. Yeah, I would say everything. And would you hang out with someone who's from the other house? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh okay, so it's not like you're evil. Kind of... no, 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 no. Which it's one's like... Slytherin? I think that would be. Yeah, oh, I love how you all just know. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's definitely that one. Why? Yeah. Is it because of like the people in it, or is it just known? It's got a reputation. A bit of both. Yeah. yeah. I can't talk about that because I'm in poverty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're good, nice people. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if each of you want to say something about your house and what makes it unique. Well, I'm in Albany, which is the greenhouse. They've got probably the best history out of all the houses. There is a scoreboard that says that every time they've won, a few years we've won seven times in a row. I'm house captain in Davies House. I take great pride in being in Davies with my dad, also being in Blue House when he was here. We focus inwards on ourselves and be the best we can be, rather than stooping to a low level of you know, criticising other houses. <laughs> I'm the house captain of Pugney House. In our house, we have a motto all of us, which is respect each other. We take ownership of our own stuff, and we also support our housemates and treat each other like a family. So we have a close bond, and ever since the new house system, which has been implemented, year eight to year eleven are all in one building. So year elevens can communicate with year eights and give support and help with deciding their house teams. This isn't just probably all the houses have the same system. That's really nice. So there's sort of like intergenerational help. Yeah. Hello, Joe. I'm house captain of the eights. We're a very friendly house. So we're kind of like the underdog, underdog house as such. So we had house music last week. I think Henry and Freddie were very keen to win it, yeah. but uh, pulled for us again, so we took the win on that one. This school is extremely well equipped. As we can see, it has a gorgeous central campus. The current building was built in 1852 and is Grade Two listed. There's also a 70-acre site in a nearby village where there's rugby, football, cricket, and athletics facilities. I spoke to some students to get their take on what it's like being a student here. Kohai Brandon, Lehai Mailing Cup. Oh, year ten. How long have you been here? I've been here like a month and a half. How are you finding it? It's good. It's like more space for us to do many activities, such as shooting club, and yeah. then we also have like the CCM, combined cadet force. Which is your favorite activity in school? My favorite is like shooting club because in Hong Kong you can't try except for like war games and stuff. But in here, shooting club is like competition or like a sport. And how often do you have sports classes in a week? One per week. In one means like three sessions. One session is like half an hour, and three sessions is like one and a half hours. We got like ten session per day. So in a week you have an hour and a half of sport. Yeah.、Mm. And is it like different sport each week, or how do you choose?、Uh, we choose it before we join the game section. In autumn term we only have like hockey and rugby. If you don't want to join hockey anymore, you can change it in like Christmas term because、oh, we have、okay. football as well. Oh, okay. So you can just change and try something different every term. Yeah, yeah. Besides the usual school subjects, the boys can take part in a huge range of extracurricular activities, from swimming, fencing, golf, sailing, and karting. To shooting, drama, combined cadet force training, beekeeping, and they've even got something called the Beast 
Beasts Club, where they're taught how to look after some unusual creatures. So as you can see, there's three beehives here because they have beekeeping club at this school, which is really cute, but also really important because obviously bee numbers are going down and we need them to be able to pollinate our crops. So a very important but overlooked skill, I think. I'm in the beast club, which is to do with biology. They learn about different insects and like reptiles. So we're just gonna feel some of these snakes. Is he sleeping? No, he's just cold because the heat also This is salad though. Is that part of your responsibility then to look after them? Not mine, but yes. He doesn't bite, yeah? Only if you don't touch his head. Oh, look at that eye. What is he thinking? Okay, I'm scared to go. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever got hurt? Our old teacher got bit, but that's it. Was it this one? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a female stick in there. It's gone up. I think he's enjoying yeah. it. Please go the other direction. Do you want to take it back? Yeah, sure. <laughs> So what's this one? So this is a leopard gecko Leslie. Aww. Nice name. She's quite old. Do you want to hold does her? she bite or run away no, or do anything? Uh, oh, yeah. She might be like a bit running away at first, but usually she's quite calm. Yeah. Right, I'm going to put it on the palm of my hand. And Make sure it doesn't jump. I'm just going to close my eyes. Keep close. Just Not imagine really. it's a, a Coming up. flower. It's cool it up yet. They've made, they, they give babies and then we feed them off. More efficient. That was the original. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Okay, welcome to the chemistry department here at the grammar school. I'm Mr. Marlow. I've been teaching chemistry here for a long time. I'm Sibo, who's from China, and we're going to demonstrate something exciting. So what we've got here is just simply Bunsen burner, which is where we're burning methane in air. And normally, in a lab, boys will see this all the time in chemistry, but we're going to do something a little bit more dramatic and actually set fire to my hand. And the way we're going to do this is very simple. We've got some water and uh, washing up liquid in there. And I'm going to bubble that through the washing up liquid and make some big bubbles, put it on my hand and set fire to it. And Sibo is going to very kindly do that. So mm. let's hope nothing goes wrong. I've been waiting this moment for a very long time. Okay, so lots of bubbles here. It's important these go up. What we've got there is methane, chemical formula CH4, reacting with oxygen in the air. And I can feel the heat on my hand when that happens. And it produces carbon dioxide, water vapor, and energy, as you can see, in the form of light and heat. Putting you under pressure, see there. Did that get in my hair? <laughs> yeah, that was close. That was closer. Ooh, that was, that was bigger than that. Uh, right, that's why we have to be careful. <laughs> Lay Highway Howard. My name's Howard. I'm in Guild Health. I'm one of the prefects of Denton Health. So what's your favourite thing about boarding? It's a lot of free time because you don't need to travel far to get back home. It's just more convenient. So this is where the boys live when they're boarders. Do you get to choose who you go in a room with? Yeah. And do you think there's any fallouts between the boys and their rooms? Is there a situation where one boy's really messy? Or do they always have to clean up at the same time every day? There'll be cleaners coming to clean the room in the morning, so it should be not too messy. Okay, so it's not like at home where you just throw your clothes all over the floor? Yeah, you have to put it in the wash every day and uh, the housekeeping will wash the clothes for us. So this is the setup. I feel like this is quite a nice room. If I was a little boy, you've got your space with your desk, your wardrobe, nice comfy bed, and a bit of a partition for your privacy with your roommate, but it's still kind of sociable. When Loughborough Grammar was founded by Thomas Burton, it wasn't actually a grammar school at all. It's always been a private school, also known as an independent school, meaning it's not state funded. It costs between 5,000 and 13,000 pound per term, depending on which year the student is in and whether they're boarding or not. Yeah, so this is, this is Helen Foster, the headmaster. So I'm really excited to talk to you. You're the first female headmaster in 527 years. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the boys called me headmaster. I've been here for five years already, so they know me in depth head pastoral role and then I was very luckily appointed to senior deputy. Been head for 
seven weeks. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. wow. So you've heard about the pastoral house system that I've set up because I'm passionate about boys being confident and happy and knowing each other. Is that the mentoring system? Yeah. We have this system here or this initiative called the Great Men Initiative. The point of that is that these are wonderful young men and it's difficult to be a young man in today's society and I really champion them to be able to speak about the tricky things and talk up because that's the best way that they can help each other and keep themselves safe. I noticed as well earlier that you seem to have a really good relationship with them. Yeah, I listen very much to the boys. I have them over to my house regularly to cook things together. I taught the boarders the other day about cream tea and whether you have the cream first or the jam. If you've got good relationships, when the tricky times come, you've got something to refer back to. And I just want our boys to be confident in who they are. I want them to like themselves. That's the power of single sex education. The boys can make mistakes and not feel the pressure. And they are quite loud in the lessons because it's good that they move around and that they interact quite a lot. Yeah. Now we all know that school dinners don't have a very good reputation, but at this school it's a different story. As you can see there's tons of choice. For lunch there are three options and the chefs try to recreate dishes from home for the boys. So there's noodles for breakfast and often things like Thai broth, Indian curries and so on. It tasted amazing. We were here with Lindsay who's the matron and at school the, the head nurse is like called the matron. How do you find working here compared to working in the hospital? It's completely different. If I'm honest I thought a school nurse would probably just be giving out plasters and ice packs and things but it's much more complex especially with the boarders so you're almost like a second family member here so they come to see you for anything whether they're feeling unwell, if they have a toothache and they need a dentist, if they need the glasses looking at, they need an Optician. All of those things, when they're travelling home again, they'll pop in and say, how do I arrange a taxi service for this? And we have somebody that does all that for them anyway, but yeah. I feel like it's a safe space so they know and they can pop to me and I can point them in the right direction. Oh, so right. They can come here just for a bit of time out. They can come here if they're unwell. With the boarders especially, I'm on call weekends, evenings, I've got my phone so the housemasters can get into always. with me. Always. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. It is like like a family. I love it here. It's a really good job. I was wondering about the discipline system. Like if you're naughty in class, what's the kind of the progression? For the less serious, I mean, discipline issue, I would say that we will have detention. Another level will be minor. Then minor is like a to write up an essay for like 200 and 250 words around and has submitted back to your teacher and tell well how will you improve your disciplinary issue and the last one will be major and you've got to stay in the room for the lunchtime and after school as well. I've got a minor once I forgot to bring my glue stick to a geography class. That is so strict. How do you find the transition from leaving this school to going to university? It's a massive difference because in high school we don't have to take care of ourselves because you know we've got a brilliant team, we've got the matron, we've got the cleaning ladies who will clean our room. But you've got to remember your glue stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then uni, there's a huge difference as well because you know we've got to make our own meals and we've got to clean our own room, there's laundry by ourselves. That's the bigger difference I would say. So this is Sarah who's Director of Future Studies and I guess it's not every school that has a Director of Future Studies, is it? No, not at all. It's a relatively new post here actually. We've had this post as a distinct identity for about two years. It's designed to ensure that the students are not just going places post 18, but they're going to the right place for each individual student, mm -hmm. whether that is university in the UK, university abroad, and any of the other pathways that students might choose to take. So my role is just to really ensure that they're making sensible decisions and the right decisions, not just knee-jerk decisions or making those decisions on the basis of a brand name. So how do you make those decisions then? Like what sort of things you'd be looking at and what kinds of unis would you choose for different types of students? So a lot of it will come down to what the student wants from their experience. For a long time, students have chosen on the basis of a name of a university, but that's probably not the best way for them to get where they want to go. So actually, we have many more conversations about things like, do they want to be in a campus university or non-campus? Do they want the experience to have broad study? And we try to tailor it so that students will pick universities that will suit them, and they're much more likely to have an enjoyable experience. So we've seen a lot of activities today, and it's making me think, how much are they actually studying. So how are the grades at this school? So our borders grades are absolutely exceptional. Our borders are predicted almost uniformly A 
stars and A's and that allows them to go on to a huge variety of destinations post 18. The majority of them will get A stars in their subjects and it's not just STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering and maths. We have students doing everything from music to the humanities to the sciences. What we want students to do is recognise that where they go should be right for them and their future plans mm. and that's what we pride ourselves on. Wow, what a day. I've done so much today and this is a really cool school. So I'm a little bit jealous because obviously I'd have loved to go to a school like this. I hope you enjoyed learning about it. I hope you found this interesting. There's information down below if you'd like to go to a school like this. See you in the next video. I'm Dai Shou Tian.